it's like a sexy Kirk cousin, like a you know, like his Kirk cousin's like better brother, like. Greetings and salutations, and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with me today is my captain for life, Will Cotton. Will, how you doing, my friend? Going on in South Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the uh, shortlist places that I'd like to go, and yes, Coastal Carolina is one of my dream schools. Shout out to Nima. So on today's Top Shelf Tuesday edition, it's a great time to be a quarterback. It's a great time to be a lot of positions, but it's not a great time to be a running back. So we're going to talk all this contract stuff. In segment two, we're going to talk about being loud and saying nothing with Sean Payton. Uh, and also, uh, injuries are a part of the game. We're going to talk about that. And then in segment three, we're all over the place, more gambling situations, the Pro Bowl's moving. A little bit of flag football, and again, to the radio commentators, let's not say that much and keep our jobs. But first, Justin Herbert, the guy who hasn't won a thing, has a very good agent. The Los Angeles Chargers and quarterback Justin Herbert have agreed to terms on a five-year, $262.5 million contract extension. He got it before they got into camp. The team announced this multi-year extension. Herbert becomes the third quarterback this year to agree to a blockbuster deal in addition to Jalen Hurts and the Eagles and Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Now Herbert, until the next contract, is the highest paid quarterback in NFL history with an average salary of $52.5 million. Must be nice money to get, especially if you ain't winning nothing. Cotton Man, how do we feel about Justin Herbert's contract? Get the bag. Get the bag. Number Get one. Bag. Number one. Super Bowls can't pay bills. You know what I'm saying? So, great. I mean, congratulations to him, you know, and his family. I mean, that's something that you're aiming for in terms of, like, the pinnacle of your career, which is which is which is excited. People who say, oh, you don't deserve or don't deserve, don't believe that. That man worked hard and got where he is. He's one of the top ten quarterbacks in the league right now. Uh, flourishing still, still a young guy, has a little couple things he got to figure out and obviously win. But uh, yeah, congratulations to him, man. Welcome and and keep you know pushing that price up, man. Keep going up. <laughs> See who's gonna get. <laughs> okay, Will. In three season, he is twenty five and twenty four with one playoff loss. Um. That's bad, man. I mean, it's like a, it's like a it's like a sexy Kirk cousin, like a you know, like his Kirk cousin's like better brother, like Kirk. Uh, I'm not mad either, man. Get the bag, GTB. It is right. Merch is coming, but mm-hmm. that's what you just paid for. Twenty five and twenty four. So I don't want it, but... you not to think, fans of the Chargers, that you you just did something. But I think I think I think stability is key. You know, now they can focus on the other things and continue that process. I mean, if you can get like 12 seasons where he's just balling, even if he doesn't make it to the Super Bowl, let's say he gets to the playoffs here and here and down there. I mean, the value of that franchise will explode just because the, there's no really no kind of like they're like, ah, we've never been here. So there's nothing to really no expectations for it. So they love it. We know that they don't care. Or do, it don't mean nothing, but, you know, congratulations to them. And I know the fan base is really happy. All right. It's a great time to be a cornerback. The Dallas Cowboys signed two-time Pro Bowl cornerback Trayvon Diggs, extended friends of the uh, OCP with uh, local ties to a five-year extension that sources say will be worth $97 million, including a $21 million signing bonus. Diggs is guaranteed $42.3 million. Uh, according to sources, he was scheduled to be an unrestricted free agent after the 2023 season, but he has now signed through 2028. Uh, Diggs had an interception in each of his first six games in the 2021 season. His average of 19.4 million ties him for fifth among NFL cornerbacks with Marshawn Lattimore of the Saints, Green Bay's Jair uh, Alexander. Cleveland's Denzel Ward, Miami's Jalen Ramsey, and uh, Baltimore's Marlon Humphreys uh, having uh, higher salaries. What do you think about Diggs getting that check? 
I mean, he's one of these very few guys can kind of cover, you know, that you can kind of – everyone say he's like a – you know, he's a – what do they call it? A, uh, I forgot what they call it. Not a, not, a, not, a, not man. What's the other one? Zone. They say he's a, Zan, a, a zone corner. But, you know, I mean, uh, he's good, man. He, the kid's good. He makes he makes interceptions, man. That's where the name of the game. If you can cause turnovers, if you can – even if it's disrupt the, the offense, man. I mean, that's something – and the guy's an athlete, so he can ball – um, he's dedicated to his craft, obviously. He's obviously, yes, you know, he, and, um, you know, both Diggs brothers are very, you know, very dedicated to their craft. So you always gonna know you're going to get good value, especially if you play, you know, and outside, uh, you know, outside of his brother, who was having like kind of things, you know, in Maryland, things like that, you don't really hear about them. They be kind of quiet now. They're kind of doing their thing. So I think it's a very good value. I think it's great. Um, congratulations to the Dig family again. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's great. And uh, CKs of Nonprofit 501c3. But I digress. This leads us to the running backs because, uh, as uh, Dickens said, it's the best of times, it's the worst of times. Saquon Barkley, as we told you on the show, be wary of guys who are telling you to do things when they already got their money. Running back Saquon Barkley signed his franchise tender uh, I believe his deal is worth up to $11 million with some ridiculously challenging incentives, including Giants making the playoffs. So he basically held out for like three minutes and and took the deal that was pretty much offered to him uh, in addition to a couple of uh, hard-to-reach incentives. Will, how are we feeling about this? Uh, it's tough, man. But I've been telling people, you know, everyone's mad at the running backs or the owners or the league, all this stuff. They'd be mad at the NF and the PA. You know, the PA is the one who has to negotiate those contracts, negotiate those things for them. And, you know, that wasn't overlooked. But, you know, they can smoke weed now and they can do all the dances they want in the end zone. So uh, I guess don't the- forget the socks. Can they still wear the fancy socks? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, and the and the and the different color cleats. That's also a big win. They got that. So, but you know, seriously, if they if if they, there are different ways to go into it, and everyone laughed when Le'Veon Bell when he went to the uh, Steelers and he was talking to them. He was like, "Look, here are the metrics. I'm the best running back that you guys have, and I'm the second most valuable re- wide receiver for the money." You know what I'm saying? Everyone laughed at him, but really, that's what you need to do. I mean, uh, it's unfortunately, he, not unfortunately, or fortunately, he ended up on the Jets, but he got a whole ton of money. But, you know, I mean, that's that's what you have to do. You have to create that market, create that value, create that. This is where I am. And part of it is you have to show up. You can't just not showing up to work. <laughs> All right. Jonathan Taylor. Uh, by the way, get a new agent or you be quiet, too. Indianapolis all-pro running back Jonathan Taylor was placed on the active physically unable to perform list after reporting to camp uh, last week, sidelining him uh, during the team practices until he's moved to the active roster. The move comes after Taylor's ankle surgery earlier this offseason. The news also comes as Taylor is complaining about money as well. Uh, He went public with his frustrations. And if I am not mistaken, the uh, owner uh, also went public saying, we're not paying you. <laughs> and you'll be in camp soon enough. Talk to me about Jonathan Taylor, Will. Unfortunate, too. But don't worry, he's going to get the bag for somebody. He's too gun, too young, too good. So it's going to happen soon enough. So we're going to be good. But, All but right. you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, he just, you know, he kind of showed his cards a little bit. You know, that's really what the thing was. And, um at least, at least he knows where he stands. So that, that's all. You can do. <laughs> that's all you know. You can move forward. So and you know. speaking of knowing where he stands, Josh Jacobs is not reporting to camp as well. Jacobs cannot be fined for missing time because he didn't have a signed contract. He was a first round draft pick in 2019. Did not have his fifth year option picked up last year, and responded with the best season of his career. And now he's just kind of waiting for his loot to come in. Uh, any thoughts about Josh Jacobs? Uh, it's unfortunate. I think he was not wanting to play for the Raiders all year. He was just talking about stuff like that. Um, he was having issues with uh, Josh Daniels and the offense, and they were not a run, you know, run first kind of offense. And it was kind of shutting him out, which means, hey, which means I'm not going to make my money. But he had a great season. You know, it's just unfortunate that kind of didn't that 
value didn't come true for him in terms of what happened, or at least in uh, financially, it did not show up. Uh, I think he'll come through. It'll be a deal that he doesn't want, but hey, man, all money is is better than no money in the NFL, <laughs> and uh, you definitely don't want to miss a year. So you miss a year, you're automatically down another year, and it, that's never good when you that uh, clock is ticking. So he'll fit, he'll find a way, man. He'll find a way, but it won't be the money that he wants unless it's you know they struck a deal with the Raiders. Yes, and Will brought up the CBA. I want our fans to know that the new CBA is a seven-year agreement that runs through 2029-2030 season. There is a mutual opt-out for both sides after the 28-29 season, so that's not going to change. And to quote Jim Ursay, the owner of the Colts, I want to make sure I get this right. He said, and I quote, we have negotiated a CBA that took years of effort and hard work and compromise in good faith by both sides to say now that a specific player category wants another negotiation after the fact is inappropriate. So that's the owners and they got a contract behind them. So with that, good luck to Ezekiel Elliott as he visits the Patriots hoping to get a check. And uh, say goodnight to Tony, uh, Sony Michelle, who said, I'm out of here and I'm going to retire at 28. Good for him. Well, any final thoughts for the running back now that we boringly told you what the contract says and how many of the owners feel <laughs> about this revisionist history with running back contract? I don't know why anyone wants to be a running back. I don't know how they get it. <laughs> somebody, want, somebody will take your money, drink your wine and eat your food. Somebody will. Sure, for sure. But if it was my son, man, don't even don't even do it. You're a quarterback and or nothing. Ain't <laughs> at least the DN something, but you're definitely not a quarterback. I mean a running back. So unfortunate guys. But it's gonna change. It's gonna change because there's gonna they're, they're gonna you know read talk about the CBA and they'll at least guys will be long and retired by then well, and it will be somebody else caring about something else. Well, the thing is, I think the biggest thing will be if altering the contract structure instead of having guys locked in for four years with a team plus five years, if it could be three years and then there was some incentives for staying with the team, maybe you can get like a, a player option. Whereas if you go to another team, you get less, you get more, less years. But did you, you get- see how much the quarterback made? Did you see how much the quarterback made? Did you see how much the linemen are making? Yeah, I'm even tight ends. Even tight ends. Like, are you? Bro- yeah. Well, anyway, I, I digress. Really. When we come back, fans, we're going to talk about Sean Payton and how he broke the code. And as Coach Adams would say, yeah, we're going to have a meeting uh, after the meeting. We'll be right back on the I Coaches Podcast. The high school and college academic and athletic landscape is changing. The growing number of college transfers, as well as student athletes being able to profit off the use of their name, image, and likeness has given student-athletes the freedom and power to make life-changing decisions. That is why it is important for student-athletes to be properly informed throughout the decision-making process. The difference between success and failure is often measured not by yards, but by inches, and even the most successful coaches and players use outside independent consultants to help improve their decision-making, which improves their results. That is what the CKA Save Project would like to do for student-athletes across the country, improve their academic and athletic results. Our academic and athletic consulting services assist student-athletes with the college decision-making process. The CKA team of former high school and college coaches can provide student-athletes an independent assessment of their academic and athletic skills to assist student-athletes in their college decision-making process. Let the CKA team evaluate your academic and athletic ability to assist you in finding the right fit for your academic and athletic career. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free virtual consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at ckasaveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment two, talking loud and saying nothing. Denver Broncos coach Sean Payton called his scathing public criticism of former Broncos coach Nathaniel Hackett, quote, a mistake. He also said, I need a little bit more filter when asked about the 2022 team performance of the uh, Denver Broncos. In an interview earlier, 
Peyton Call Hackett's 15 game run with the Broncos, one of the worst coaching jobs in the history of the NFL. He said they were 20 dirty hands around quarterback Russell Wilson's career worst season. Peyton also likened how the Broncos handled Wilson's high profile arrival to what he called pomp and circumstance, which uh, is kind of what the New York Jets are doing with Aaron Rodgers. Um, Will. You have been around me as a coach. You know of my disdain for extra uh, attention to our ball club. Uh, what were your thoughts when you heard about what Sean Payton said about now Jet offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett? I don't. I don't know why he even had to say that. I mean, I don't know. I really. I mean, you know, Super Bowl winning uh, coach. You know, you work with one of Hall of Hall of Famers. You know, so. Why even take that shot on? Why even take that shot on? I mean, unless like it was a personal thing, you know, maybe like bumped into him at a hotel or something, or you know, ran each other at like a convention or something, and made like a little joke, you know, that he didn't like. But other than that, it's like, dude, like, why would you even say that? You know what I'm saying? Like that was that was totally uncalled for. And Sean Payton is better than that, man. He's a better coach than that, and he has better class than that, which is kind of you know, kind of unfortunate. So here's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm very protective of my players and I'm thinking Russell Wilson must look really bad. If your head coach is going to step out like this to talk about how bad he was coached up, because that's the only thing I can think of is this guy's going to really stink the joint up and I don't want this stink on me. So I'm going to blame the other guy. And then throughout the season, I'm going to talk about how I've got to unlearn some habits that he picked up for the other guy. And that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Uh, so yeah, we let, let's, let's not do that in the future, Sean. And um, I think you guys do play the jets and uh, this coach of fraternity is, is yeah, they are. They are. They are. This coaching know. fraternity remembers everything. I, I'm thinking that ever since, the, ever since like 2007 or eight, man, they took a page from the WWE. Man, they just got their own storylines and they had people say stuff with the right things. And they're trying to, you know, they're probably reading the, you know, all oh, the ticket sales are kind of low for the Jets Broncos game. Let's kind of get <laughs> the up a little bit. I wouldn't believe it, but you know, I mean, it, it's good. It, it good. Talk trash and talk trash to the team that you're playing this season. <laughs> how, how when you're playing somebody ain't talking to you, you know, five years ago, five years next, like, oh, well, in 2027, we're going to see y'all Vikings. It's like, no, you need to play him, you know, play him, trash, play him right now. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So the New York Jets, Aaron Rodgers signed a rework contract uh, that cut his salary a lot. And as a result of that, let's just say there is a few extra dollars to pick up some players. Dalvin Cook on line one. So by the time this comes out, folks, Jets might have a running back. Uh, you're going to hear our thoughts on the Jets on the preview issue. But, Will, are you now sold on the Jets? Because I'm trying to be sold on the Jets, and I'm starting to listen a little more closely, strictly for entertainment purposes only. What are you thinking about the Jets now, especially if they get Dalvin Cook? Uh, prime time, man. It's got to be prime time. But remember, they did something like that with like Le'Veon Bell, and then they had another receiver that was supposed to be pretty good or something like that. Or you know, we'll see, man. We'll see if it works. Um, uh, I'm excited for the New York fans, the Jets fans. I know they haven't had a lot to have excited for, but this is great for them. Um, and both teams actually all three new york teams are actually going to be pretty well this year so or at least excited i don't know we'll see about the giants but they will be excited and, and watchable so uh it's a great time for new york great time for the jets uh we'll see if they get to that uh nine wins now if they get dolvin uh, i'm going to take the under unfortunately because uh rogers is not the rogers we got and i think they got a little uh with that one. <laughs> All right. So injuries are part of the game. Uh, Joe Burrow, who was next up in the uh, quarterback getting paid column, had a scary non-contact injury to his right calf. And Will, it reminded me of KD's calf injury before he had the Achilles. I am uber cautious with everything. 
Uh, the season doesn't start for four, five weeks. I really don't need to see Joe Burrow in the preseason. Um, one, did you see the uh, injury footage? And two, how would you handle that, sir? Oh, I did see the injury. Um, it didn't look like it bite him in the calf. You know, it didn't look him too, too crazy, but he immediately went down. The thing about Burrow is he he always starts slow. Every The last couple of seasons, he started very slow, and obviously he picked it up towards the end, and he made it to either a, a playoff run. But, you know, he these slow starts can really get you, and he's going to be even slowing even now because he's going to miss a lot of time. Uh, that's the only thing I would really worry about. I mean, the guy – I guess you can say now he's what his third year in the in the in offense, so he doesn't necessarily have to think about what he's doing. But you know those complexes and that timing and that and that relationship and the nuances um, with 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 receivers and running backs and, and and coaches and things like that. What plays the call with tempo and things like that. Um, you have to play. So uh, it's unfortunate. I think uh, Cincinnati is going to have a slow start, but knowing Burrow, uh, they'll pick it up right around the right time and they'll beat the teams they need to. And uh, they'll also beat the teams they should. So I think they'll be okay. And I think cautiously, uh, they're just put, uh, keeping them out. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. All right. And Jalen Ramsey, the Dolphins star cornerback, will undergo surgery on the meniscus in his left knee and is expected to miss the start of the season. They say he's a, his ACL is intact, but it wasn't immediately known how long he's going to be sidelined. That's a big loss for the Dolphins. He did post on social media that he'll be back. So one guy is back. But the last guy I want to talk about, Will, is Naeem Hines. He had a non-contact injury sitting in the water, and somebody hit him, and the Buffalo Bills are not trying to pay him as we close this segment, sir. What do you think, man? Should he get his money? Or, hey, injury is an injury, and it's not our fault, and that's your bad. Talk to him. Uh, business is always going to be business, man. Unfortunately, you know, um, Naeem Himes, uh, it's unfortunate, sir, but the contracts and the details, I'm sure they probably said that you shouldn't be doing that, um, even though it's probably, you know, one of those things where, you know, players are like, I'm going to do it and I'll be fine. You know, they don't tell nobody or take no pictures. But unfortunately, sir, you got caught uh, and they're not going to pay you. I mean, you, you know, we'll see what happens when they take it into um, – you know, when they go to NFL, NFL, uh, when the PA talks to them and they do their, uh, you know, their, their, their jig and dance and see what they do. But uh, I, I highly doubt he gets any money for it. And it would be unfortunate. Wow. But, you know, it's just one of those things, man. Wow. Things. All right. So, fans, when we come back, another gambling suspension. You don't listen to us. We'll be right back on the Odd Coaches Podcast. Why should student athletes use the CKA Save Project Academic and Athletic Consulting Services? Over the past 15 to 20 years, colleges, universities, professional sports teams, business organizations, and others have increased their use of consulting services to improve their decision-making processes and results. Over the same time, the athletic and academic landscape has changed for high school and college student athletes as the NCAA has raised initial academic eligibility requirements for student athletes while decreasing the number of transfer restrictions. Former college student athletes have noted that they were academic and athletically unprepared for the rigors of college. Let the CKA Save Projects close to 30 years of academic and athletic experience help guide student athletes to increase success as we work to help student athletes achieve the goal of obtaining a college degree. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at CKA at CKASaveProject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment three. Will, we've got another gambling suspension. The <laughs> NFL confirmed that uh, Ioma Zare K, I apologize for my Nigerian friends, it does look Nigerian, of the Denver Broncos has been suspended indefinitely for betting on NFL games in the 2022 season. He will be eligible to petition for reinstatement this time next year. Sean Payton who's got distractions now. This is the second time on the show we're talking about Sean Payton, came to the rescue with the Mike King logic. He said, gambling has become an increasingly more prevalent throughout professional sports and more, sport, uh, more states are making it legal. 
Uh, there have been 10 NFL players. And when you got a bunch of players getting D's, you have to start looking at the message. This is what John Payton said to the media. We've got a lot of D's in our league this year with the policy. In other words, you're advertising gambling all over the place, and then you're mad that they gamble, which is our, Mike, our friend Mike King's argument. Is Sean Payton right, wrong, or, or indifferent? Because rules are rules, Will. Uh, the rules are the rules, you know, but God, I'm sure they tell guys like, hey, you know, this is how, don't do it in the locker room. Don't do it on your company phone. Don't do it on the company Wi-Fi. Don't do it while you're wearing the company uniform. <laughs> you know, I mean, dude, like it, it's, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's just like if you work at, at any kind of job or organization, they know you drink. They know you they know you're not supposed to drink in the office, you know, <laughs> but they know you. Hey, they trust you. Look outside. You do your thing. We trust you. We know you. You, you know the law, you know, and if you get caught. You got to do what you got to do. But at the same time, I don't know why these dudes because see, the, everyone thinks they're so slick. You know, oh, I'm, I'm only going to use my data. Oh, I'm not going to connect to the Wi-Fi. Oh, I'm going to use my my other phone. And I'm like, come on, guys, like just like. You know, no. you're, you're in the NFL. If somebody if somebody was like, Will Kyle, you can be in the NFL, but you have to give away. You can't sports bet ever again, at least until you retire. That's easy. That's easy. Good. And, you, know, <laughs> you can't bet on anything, sir. Nothing. No cricket. No bocce ball. No, no sir. I won't. I won't put. No, I won't even bet on tic-tac-toe. No way. I'm only betting 10 anyway because. Not a joke when I say strictly for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> As you all still make fun of me, coach. Seriously, you got you want a dollar forty four threats. <laughs> I could have made playing it too. Playing in the mom. <laughs> but no, uh, like, they don't. They just don't like you know. And the and the and the and the situation is the NFL is getting lucky because nobody, boy, even like Calvin Ridley, was pretty big. But it's not nobody like you know. If it was like Lamar I didn't know he was that good. By the way, they keep telling oh, me yeah. that this is a big comeback and. He's yep. gonna light up the league. I'm like, okay, if you say yep. so. We'll see. Well, they they said they said that about Terrell uh, Terrell Pryor, and uh, he was a bum that that whole season, the whole season. I don't know what he was doing, but it was crazy. All right, so the Pro Bowl moves back to Orlando. The NFL announced that Orlando will host the 2024 Pro Bowl game presented by Verizon. Uh, you got a lot of events that no one's watching. But yet people are watching. So let me tell you about the reimagined Pro Bowl. Peyton and Eli are coming back as head coaches. Uh, the top 88 stars will show off their talent and celebrate the season. It will be broadcast both on ESPN and ABC Sunday, February 4th, 2024. Uh, as a result of the feedback from players, teams, and fans, uh, it will introduce an entirely new format. Featuring an exciting mix of live and tape skill challenges, spotlighted will by flag football, which is a critical part of the NFL future. Uh, what are we doing with the uh, Pro Bowl? The, do, do you care? Do you not care? Uh, people watched it last year because it's got NFL on it, but you know. Yeah, I like it. it you know, it's like watching like like draft like you know round like. Four or five, like nobody really cares, but they watch it because, like you said, the brand. Uh, you know, it's great to see. Um, I like to like to change it. I like they try to have it in a way that allows players to actually want to compete and join um, and see. You know, it's different than we did growing up. Watching the Pro Bowl was a lot better and more fun. And now, guys, they playing and you no know, blitzing and you know, after Sean Taylor, I think Sean Taylor ruined everything for everything. <laughs> Bless his heart. Yes, indeed. Right, yeah. Rest in peace. But he ruined the Pro Bowl for everybody. <laughs> well, let me give you concrete numbers. The 2023 Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl game in Las Vegas garnered 6.4 million viewers across Disney, ESPN, ABC, and Disney XD, as well as digital. Uh, more than 58,000 people came to Allegiant Stadium, and that was up 16%. So, hey, flag football is the way to go, and uh, somebody's going to be watching it. But as we wrap up, another local radio guy got himself in hot water. The radio partner of the Washington Commanders fired at host uh, Don Geronimo after he made several disparaging remarks last week about 
Charlotte McBride, who works for the local uh, CBS affiliate WUSA during his show on iHeartMedia Network. After spotting McBride, what are you doing? Geronimo said during the broadcast, hey, look, Barbie's here. Hi, Barbie girl. He later referenced her as, quote, that chick, unquote, and also said, I'm guessing she's a cheerleader. You can't do that. And you especially can't do that with the Washington Commanders organization. So, Will, did the Commanders overreact, or what are you doing, man? Nah, you're clearing house. I, I would never. I would never. If I have a new boss, I'm never. I'm on P's and Q's. I'm showing up early and I'm staying late. So I don't know what he's doing talking about all that stuff. But he must have known he was going to retire soon, or they're going to not. You know. Uh, continuous contract or anything like that. So, uh, when, and, you know, people start, you know, not be on their P and Qs. They start being sloppy and they start saying stuff in ways that you know cost you a job. And you know, I guess they made the decision easy for them. So, good luck to sir, but you know, don't be a jerk and uh, <laughs> don't be a All right, so fans, as we close the Odd Coaches Podcast Pro Football Preview episodes. Begin Saturday, August 12th. It is something I am excited about. We are going to uh, have a lot of coverage of college and pro football. This is our third season doing it. We're going to release daily divisional previews as we prepare uh, for the football season. We will have shows on all eight divisions. We want to engage fan bases in conversations not confrontations. So we're following all types of fans, and we hope those fans follow us back, and it should be a lot of fun. Will will join us for several of these episodes, and sometimes I might be Joey Styles and go by myself, but we're very excited about it. Will, any thoughts on it before we wrap up this week? Man, I'm ready. Football is back, man. It's been been a long summer, and my my Yankees, I bet, not Stankies, have been, you know, but that's how they've been playing. So, <laughs> you know, so I'm glad football's back, man. Let's get back to it. Fancy football, all that stuff too, man. So it's always good. America's always good when football's on. <laughs> yes, indeed. So on behalf of my tag team partner and our cavalcade of stars, especially today, my captain for life, Will Cotton, I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the Eye Coaches podcast. And we will see you on the sidelines. Till next time, take care. The Odd Coaches Podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA Save Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at ckasaveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F R A N C H I Z E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.cka.saveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.